Hi, this is Ron, WA7GIL. Uh, today I'd like to show you how I repaired this uh, QRP Labs QCX Plus transceiver for someone. Uh, it had a minor problem, so it ended up being a fairly quick fix. I've uh, repaired several of these types, uh, QCX and QCX Plus, with eh, various problems. It's never something insurmountable, but uh, sometimes a lot more complicated than this one turned out to be. I'd like to apologize right up front for the uh, vertical uh, orientation of the photography. I didn't realize that was happening until it was too late. But uh, here we go. Well, we have here a brand new, new built uh, QCX Plus. And the first thing I do is, uh, in troubleshooting this thing, it's not working or there are some issues with it. I uh, do a quick check for any shorts, don't see anything. You know, I look for missing parts, that sort of thing, or burn parts, and I don't see anything. Looks like actually like a very, very nice build, very square. In fact, this uh, builder's actually used uh, sockets on all of, all of the ICs. That's not real necessary because these things rarely fail, but some failure modes will take out the IC3, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to replace without the socket, but that's fine. So anyway, very nice build. Uh, next step is we will use the ohm meter before putting any power on this thing and check for shorts on the 12 volt line to ground. And that looks good. It's building up a capacitor in the K ohms range. And look at the five volt line. Same thing, It's there's not a short there. So it shouldn't hurt anything to turn the power onto it. And speaking of which, I will check with power turned on. Move my meter back. And again, it's looking good there. So it's ready for the next step. I do not turn one of these things on without a dummy load. So before providing a power, connecting power to one of these radios, you should always connect a 50 ohm dummy load. This is a homemade one out of 200 ohm, two watt resistors. And uh, we can go ahead and power it up. See what happens. Okay, it's running version 1.06 of the firmware. It's a 40 meter radio. So far, so good. Looks real good. Well, now we'll start the receiver alignment. So we'll start with uh, going to the alignment menu. And we'll start with bandpass filter. Ah, it's already been aligned. Uh, that's 0, 08 on the scale, or which is very, very good. We can check it and see. Yep, it's going down, coming up, going down. So that's peaked very nicely. And that peak is more or less in the center of the capacitor range, which is where we want it. So that test is good. Next thing on the alignment is to go to uh, the IQ balance. And I'm seeing zero basically wherever the volume's set, which means there's no audio getting over to that uh, monitor point. It was getting to the first monitor point out of the, out of the IQ balance control uh, so that the uh, bandpass filter read correctly, but it's not getting past there to the next monitor point, which is after the volume control. So that's where we need to start looking is in the audio section. Well, the next thing I like to do is check the bias voltages on all these operational amplifiers. We'll start with IC5 and pin 1. You see 2.5 volts, and that's what you should see. Same on 2, same on 3, 5, 6, and 7. And it holds true for the next IC, number 6. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. 
the next one. So, so far, so good here. And the next one. Oops. And finally, the the B half of number nine should also be two and a half. So five, six, and seven. One, two, and three of IC9 should be about 4.8 volts or so. So there's 4.8, 4.8, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.7, 4.8, 4.7, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 
fairly close anyway. Okay, we're gonna stop there on that, that part for now. Okay, now I'm going to uh, transmit and watch it on the scope, and see what we've got. And that's 38 volts, which is uh, not bad. <laughs> so looks like it's transmitting okay, and I'm, I have headphones on and the side tone sounds pretty good. Okay, I've spread the uh, turns a little bit here on L3. And you can't see the scope, but I'll tell you it's about 39 volts now. So it's going up, and I've spread it about as far as I can here. So uh, next step is to uh, take off a turn and see if it goes up even further. The easiest way to do that, first turn off the power. In fact, disconnect the power. I don't just turn off the switch. Um, heat up one leg and pull the wire out. Take off one turn and uh, I'm not going to cut it, trim it, or anything, just put it back in the hole. That can, can be very easily soldered just right to that same spot on top of the board. And I'll make this permanent after we can get our adjustments all made. Okay, now I've got 40 volts on that thing, uh, output. That's about four watts. I know 40 meters will do much better than that, so we'll stop on this one for now. Yeah, we're still, still up there at 40. Next step would be to compress the turns on this L2. Always use a non-metallic tool to do this fingers sometimes work better. I'm squeezing these turns together. It's a little, a little hard to see. I just want to see if that made any difference. So now, yeah, we're at uh, 43 volts. So that did make a big difference. And then we'll uh, spread these out just a little bit. Forty-four volts. I'm gonna spread these a little more and see if see if I get any increase. Meaning one more turn maybe to come off. Yeah, they went up just a little bit. So I think I'll take one more off of this one. Turn off the power. I think now's a good time to do a little better job of uh, removing the uh, coating from this wire. The enamel wasn't burned off very well. It's still not looking real good. I'll, I'll see about how to fix this later here. Right now, just want to get it going. Test. And, yeah, 44.8 volts, so we're, we're still going up. This is good. Finish uh, spreading the turns. We're just two turns less now than what we started with on this coil. And it's not getting any better, about 44.8. So I'm going to stop there on that one. I'll, I'll put it back together correctly.
and a little more compression on this one just for fun. See if we can get any more out of it. Yeah, there's 45 volts there for just a, a little bit. Four eight. All right, I think I'm gonna stop there on, on power adjustment for now. And I'll clean this up and get back. Okay, on the spectrum analyzer, second harmonic is about 46 dB down, which uh, is better than minus 43 dBc, so that's, uh, that means spectral purity requirements. There's no harmonics above that visible up to 30 megahertz, so the third and fourth are clean. Well, that was it. Thank you for watching. This is WA7GIL73.